And so at this moment, let us pray and the intention for today, because we are facing again the coronavirus. We are facing the unemployment in our world today. We are uh, continue to to be challenged in a way how to find excuse me today a little bit shaky <laughs> as we are facing the identity of Jesus and uh, entering further and further into the Holy Week, which is next week. We ask the Lord to help us, especially tonight, as we are reflecting on the Word of God today. And so I'd like to invite you to listen well to the Gospel today and uh, see if any word, any phrase, any image that God wants to talk to you at this moment. Any phrase, any word, any image. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving God, we ask you to bless us. Bless us with your word. Bless us with your presence. Bless us with your mercy. Bless us with your love. Be with us, sit with us, stay with us, so that we continue to feel at home wherever we are. Bless those who struggle right now, every moment of their lives, for life, for confusion that they are questioning your presence right now. And so we ask you to bless us. A reading from the Gospel of St. John. Chapter 8, verses 51 to 59. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? All the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify my name, myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my days. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The Gospel of the Lord. And so what word, what phrase, what image that strike you the most today when you listen to this Gospel? Please type it on your comment so that... Uh, we can uh, dialogue. We can dialogue. Any words, any phrase. Lucky that the gospel is not that long. <laughs> and a lot of times when we hear this kind of gospel of John, it's it, it just repeating and repeating all over. And sometimes we say, okay, what's, 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 what's going on here? What Jesus wanted to teach us and wanted to uh, communicate with us. And so I'd like you to uh, just all right. The word that came to me 
or the phrase that we came to me, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. That is the phrase. I want to read one more time, okay, because I like you to be blessed by the word without any preaching around it, without any explanation. I want you to get in touch with the word because the word of God, I believe, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is the voice of God. Is the hand and is a feet, is a tongue, is a face, is a presence of God. And so I like you to open yourself and just allow God to touch you, to touch you, your family, the world today with this word. And so if you can just close your eye at this moment and ask yourself, what does this text, this gospel mean for me and for the world today? Okay, so just close your eye as I'm reading this again. Jesus said to the Jews, I am a man, a man, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died as did the prophets, yet you say whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died, all the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth nothing. But it is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jewish said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and you have seen Abraham. Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, Before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. So, so what do you think? What is the text for you and for us today? You can see that Jesus, Jesus entering into a very heated conversation. As you know that Jesus today revealed his identity even more before Abraham came to be. Think about it. As you know that Abraham is the big hero, is a big name, is, is, is the father of religion, if you will. Uh, I will read the, 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 the text from Genesis just so, so that you know that Abraham meant so much for the Jews. Uh, and Jesus not just equates himself to Abraham, but he existed and bigger and greater than even Abraham. That is the crazy thing. That's why they said, you are crazy. They want to kill him because of that too. Okay, so I like to just go down the text a little bit and then we, we enter into the deeper question. Who is Jesus? What does I am mean for him? For the Jews and for us today. Okay? So, amen, amen, I say to you. Whenever we hear amen, amen, like twice, you know that it's like, it's a confidence, it's a, it's a, it's a what do you call that? It's, it's a certainty. Amen, amen, I say to you. I already told you, yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen, I say to you. Whoever keeps my word will never see death. I'm kind of questioning myself keeps the word keeps whoever keeps my word and my question for you is what does that mean to say keep my word keep my word is like keeping my cell phone with me keep my wallet with me keep um keep my promises even keep promises i can keep my promises but you know what i can after you die I don't need to keep that, that promise anymore. So what does that mean to say, keep my word? 
And so I want to throw it out there for you so, so that you can think a little bit. Uh, so you can think a little bit. So I have Sandra Brown, but I know him and I keep his word. Very good. I want to I wanna challenge you right there. What does that mean? Okay. I know him. Ah, that's a good one. Uh, I know him is different than I know about him, right? So I know her is different than I know about her. So I know him means I know personally that person. So go back to that. Keep my word. Keep my word. What that means. Is that possible? Right? Is that possible is not to see death or taste death. And what kind of death that, that Jesus wanted to talk to us today? I, I explained to you before the death here is not just death physically, our body, but also the death of sin. Sin can also kill us. Sin, all our weaknesses, and we call sin, also can jeopardize, can kill us day by day. Right? So, so, so just go back to that one and see how can we, how can we keep the word? How can we keep the word? And I would like you to if you say yes, yes, I keep the word of God. What word of God that you can just type it on your comment there? What word of God that you always remind yourself that always hear? For example, you go to the, you do something and you hear the word of God comes to your mind. What the word of God that that you always remember in your life in your family life, in your relationship life, in your teaching moment? Uh, what do you use when you correct one another? What do you use when you are afraid of God? What words came to your mind right away? So, so just put that on your comment for me so that I can uh, follow you, okay? The one that I, I remember the most about the Word of God that I, I want to keep, I want to follow, I want to challenge myself all the time is love one another. Love one another. Or another one is forgive seven times seven and you are forgiven. Uh, and another one is give and receive. If you, are, if you receive a lot, you are also expected to give a lot. And so that's also fasting, praying, and almsgiving. Remember, in this Lent, these three words are very important. So keep my word to me means to do what Jesus teach. And believe me, just like keep God's commandment. Thank you, and Yom. Um, and another word from, from, from God is do to others as you want them to do for you. Uh, the, the short way and the, the, I call the cheating way, is the Ten Commandments. You just name Ten Commandments. You can cover almost everything there, right? Uh, you worship God and only God alone. Honor your mom and dad. Don't covet, don't steal. Uh, you shall not kill. You shall not covet others' uh, wife or husband and all that. So remember that one. And... And somebody just told me about, remember I told you yesterday, the fallen upward. The fallen upward, the first half of our life is we focus on, on Ten Commandments. The second half of our life, we focus on the Beatitude. How many of us use the Beatitude? Blessed are those who pour in spirit because the kingdom of God is yours. How many of us want to be a peacemaker how many of us become you know become like a mourner become meek because God blessed them now how many of us live in the beatitude right now because I believe that most of us on the uh, social media right now that you establish your first half of your life you're very successful in terms of career 
in terms of family, in terms of vocation, you name it. Uh, but now the second half, we not just obey the law, but we share our life. We use the law and we use the law so that we can help others to fulfill their goal, their life, their vocation as well. And so, uh, so what is the word or all the words of God that you remember at this moment that you want to keep so that hopefully you will never see death in your life? All right, so that's just a, just a question for you and so to see if, if you have any, any words that you remember. Whoever keeps the words keep for me is always is a challenge. Of course, the other day we used the word remain in me. So keeps my word. Like I said, some of you, some of you keep the cell phone with you all day and all night, you know, like me. The first thing that I touch when I get up, when I wake up, is my phone. I want to see how many how many messages that I missed last night? What's going on? Anybody texted me? Any news? Any updated? How many likes on my a YouTube video? How many comments and likes on my Facebook? You know? And then we always keep, keep that, that phone with us. Now, that's is for young people. I'm not sure about old people, but I think old people, we carry the, the phone everywhere. But is that the way we keep the Word of God even? The Word of God is not about carrying it and showing it people and for ourselves. But the Word of God, the best image, if you receive my reflection today or if you read my reflection today on Facebook, the same message, I use the, the example of the bulletproof monk. I don't know how many of you saw that movie. It's Chong Yun Fat. And um, what's his name is uh, um, William Scott and uh, the, the lady. But in the character in there is the bullet, bulletproof monk and uh, Sarah, uh, no, no, Sarah Jade and Carl. But basically, this, this monk. He was, he was given the scroll, the ancient scroll, like a, the, like a Bible for us, the Holy Bible, to keep, to protect. And he did that for 60 years. And now he looked for the next generation, the next carrier. And he found the thief. And he found a bad girl to be the next carrier of the scroll, of the sacred scripture, if you will. And, uh, and in that movie, it shows a very interesting, from a thief, from a bad girl, they become a profound, holy, not just gentle, but very confident. And so I put it in here. And so I want to read it because it's very nice when you write down. I said, I love a movie called Bulletproof Monk. The word was written the word, remember, was written on his body and memory of the scroll carrier. When he or she is chosen to be the scroll carrier, that person will be protected and has extraordinary gifts. The gift of confidence, of peace, of grace, of joy, and a gift of living in the present moment. You know, it's somehow I feel like when you carry that word, when you keep the word of God, when you keep the sacred word, you become confident, you become grateful, you become joyful, and you don't worry too much because it seems like you have everything. The word is with you. God is with you. You are protected. And, and, and somehow, you don't, have to, you don't have to worry about future or you don't have to worry about the past anymore. You just enjoy the moment. And so I put here, the monk with no name, which is a chonian fat, who carried the scroll for 60 years, said to the thief, because he had to teach the thief how to present himself, how to be a new person. 
It's not about anger. It's about peace. It's not about power. It's about grace. It's not about knowing your enemy. It's about knowing yourself. This is the juice. This is the, this is the, the result of knowing. Knowing the word. Knowing him. This is the result of keeping the word. You're no longer seeking for revenge. You're no longer living for yourself. You no longer control others with your power, with your money, with anything. You just be yourself and allow God to ordain you, to, to, to protect you, to guide you. So that, that's a little bit of nutshell. If you haven't seen that movie, check it out. Bullet Monk, Bulletproof Monk, that's the name of the movie. All right, now I want to go a little bit more. As you know that the whole conversation between Jesus and, and the Jews is about the comparison between Abraham and Jesus today, as you know that. And I don't know if I say that, oh, before your great, 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 great grandfather existed, I am. How do you feel? say you are disrespectful you are a very bad person dad you're so disrespectful but in here jesus telling you the truth and abraham was so powerful in that religion and jesus want to compare and let them know that before abraham came to be jesus i am and remember he compared that I am the great and I mean I am way back, way back to the Genesis, if you will, to the Genesis. Genesis, I believe, 13 and 4. And so today I want to read, I want to read to you the Genesis 17, which is the first reading today about Abraham to see how powerful Abraham is. And then you just go back and compare Abraham with Jesus even greater. Okay, so I, let me just read this. It's not too long. When Abraham prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abraham. Your name shall be called Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Cana, as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. So think about it. Think about it. That's how awesome Abraham, that God promised him to be, the father of all nations, a lot of children. And then today, thousand years later, Jesus, a young man, less than 50 years old, as you know, back then, 50 years of age, you are qualified to retire at the age of 50. And he's only 30 some years old. And he claimed that he existed before Abraham. What do you think about that statement? That is very risky statement. He could be killed right there. He could be stoned right there. And in fact, yes, they were to chase after him to kill him. And he just disappeared from them. Right? So just to give you a little bit of that. Now, I wanted to go to the... The answer, I am. What does that mean when Jesus say, I am? You know? What does that mean? Anybody has any idea 
What does it mean when Jesus say, I am? Without going to the philosophical, without going to the theological or biblical uh, interpretation. What does it mean for you when Jesus I am? If you can, just go to your, to your family. If you, you say, Mom, don't go anywhere. And Mom said, no, I am. I am here. I am with you. I will be your protector. I will be here to pray for you. You know what I'm talking about? And so the word I am is no longer. Uh, thank you, Nyo. So I always exist. Very good. Very good. Anybody else? Anybody else? What does that mean to say I am? Yes. I am here exists beyond time. He's always present. He is God and God is him. He is a son of God. Yes. But the word I am is so awesome. It's so awesome, my brothers and sisters. If you, if you search on Google how many times I am on a Bible, some they say 300 times. 300 times. And another book say over a thousand times. I don't know how can you find that many in a Bible. But just to give you a, a little bit of that, from Genesis 15 verse 1, there is a sentence say, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And to this point, the word I am, the word I am is not just I am alone, but when Jesus say I am with you always, I am the gatekeeper, I am the truth, I am the life, I am the way, I am your savior, I am redeemer, I am the son of man, I am the son of God, you name it, all that I am is this extraordinary. If I ask you, if I ask you, who are you? What do you say? Anybody, just type it on a comment. If somebody asks you, who are you? How do you answer that question? If you ask that same question to me, you know what, what my first answer will be? I am Father Ted. Tôi là cha Thắng. I am Father Ted Huang, Redemptive Missionary. I am Vietnamese, I am Asian, I am 47 years old, I am what? I am a child of God, yeah? But now, a lot of times, my brothers and sisters, we focus on the second half of the sentence, rather the first half of it, the first half of it. Of course, today we focus on Jesus, on God. God, when God said, I am with Moses. Remember, when Moses about to go to Egypt to, to liberate the people there, Joseph said, Elohim, if they ask me your name, how should I say? And that Elohim, the voice said, I am who am. I am who am also means I exist, that I exist. You can't explain more. It just, even in that phrase, there is no verb. It just existence itself. But today, my brothers and sisters, yes, God is existing, not just where you at right now, but where I am right now. Not just in this state, but in the other states, not with the question, but with non-question, not with bad people or just good people, but every people. 
you know what I mean? So God is with the sick right now. God is in ICU. God is in our home and our in our office. God is driving where you are driving right now. God is suffering, crying with us. And, and so the word I am, it beyond time, it's beyond place, it's beyond situation, it's beyond condition. And so we need to, we need to discover this presence of God, the power of God, more than just the title. You see, a lot of times we give God title, which is good, which is very human. You know, I want you to be my best friend. I want you to be my savior. I want you to be my God. You can, you can name anything, but we forgot the first half of the sentence. Ted, Sandra, Peter, David, I am. Is that enough for us? Or we say, that, no, it's not enough. I want you to be my this, my dad, you know. My, 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 my mom, she, she loved my name, of course, because my, my parents gave me a name, Hoang Chung Tak Thang, Thet Thang Chung Hoang. I was born during the Vietnam War, 1972, during the, the summer, bloody summer of 72 in Vietnam. And so my dad came home after a long, long battle. He named me Tak Thang, Hoang Chung Tak Thang. Because he hoped and he believed that this, this guy, this baby, will bring victory to the country. And you know what? They, 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 they so proud of that name. And so now my mom asked me, Dad, how come your name is so short? It's not the full name that I gave you. Your name is Hoang Chung Tok Thang Ma. You know? She compared with Father Peter Lin. Uh, cái gì? Cái gì Nguyễn, Nguyễn Bá, Quốc Linh Oh, cái tên sao mà nó cao siêu Sao mà nó đẹp như vậy Tên, tên mà vừa đẹp vừa sang trọng Mommy wanted me to To continue to use those names But but forgotten that I am mommy I am your son I am your precious being Give from God into your life That is enough all the name, all the title, all the career, the ages, the color we put on, it's just, I don't want to say it's secondary, but we forgot oftentimes the first half of our existence. Why are we here? I am the Son of God. I am a child of God. I am anointed and baptized. In the name of the Father and the Son, who is, I have this human dignity. I am created in the image and likeness of God. When I have a chance to preach at the funeral, you know the the language in English, we very clear when a person dies, everything becomes past tense. Everything, you know, like oh, my dad was very great. My dad was very very blessed. My dad was a very good person. My dad was a good husband. My dad was a good gentleman. And everything was the past. And you know what? I was so not very pleased when I heard was. When I heard that my dad was, then he, he no longer good today. He was good in the past. He was blessed in the past, but he's no longer here. So to me, I said, if he was great, he is always great. If he was beloved, he's always beloved. If he was blessed, he is always blessed. My brothers and sisters, today, we have to go to that level of believing in the one called I am and I am here is not just God is I am but God is I am with us God 
is I am so that we become I am too. And so today, my brothers and sisters, God, not just incarnated into our human being, but God also suffered going through that passion for us so that we become great, we become saved, we become children of God again and again. And so it's 610 already. Uh, I'd like to maybe wrap it up from here and I'd like you to uh, pause a little bit and ask yourself, how do I keep the word of God in my life? Where is Jesus, the I am, in the midst of my life and in the world today, right now, right now? And how can I discern God's voice and God's presence in my life now, in my life now? Where is God? Where am I? Where am I going? I'm here just to survive? Oh, I'm here to witness, to testify that God is good and God is so good to me. My brothers and sisters, each of us is so blessed and I have to confirm with you, if you can see me on the social media, you are so lucky, so blessed. Think about it. First, you can hear me you can see me, you can connect with me through Wi-Fi, you have to have your smartphone with you, you have to have a computer with you, you even have the whole circle of friends throughout the world. And not just that, because you heard the Word of God way before at 5.30 today, because you are excited because you are longing to hear the word of God. Therefore, you are so blessed. You are so lucky. I hope you are grateful today. I hope you be able to say, God, thank you, thank you, and thank you for who you are, period. You don't need to add more in there for who you are, for you, with me and you are always amen god bless you everyone and this moment the second half i wanted to pray the our father and i like you to use this our father to pray for the world today to pray for yourself to pray for our faith for our presence so that we don't neglect our presence because in us around us above us, behind us, underneath us, there is God. God is everywhere, and God is with us always. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. I'd like to pray the, the spiritual communion, as I promise you that the Word of God is flesh. The Word of God is God. Let us receive God and God's Word and presence through this prayer for those who have no chances to go to Mass today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And I'd like to pray Novena Prayer to our Mother Perpetual Health, the icon right after, uh, behind me. I want to turn around and let us pray together. Okay? 
O Mother of Perpetual Help, with the greatest confidence we come before you, Holy Teacher, to beseech your intercession. We think of you, Mother, at the foot of the cross. Your heart must have bled to see your son in agony, but your joy was great when he rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil. Mother of Sorrows, pray for us in this time of trial. Help us not to lose heart. Intercede for your people who are afflicted with coronavirus. Comfort your people who are vulnerable and anxious. Protect healthcare workers who put their lives at risk. Inspire our leaders to make good decisions. Change our hearts so that we may act responsibly. Teach us to trust in God's love and mercy and to share with you the joy of having courageously faced up to all the challenges of life. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. And thank you, everyone. God bless you and continue to be the great I am, wherever you are, God bless you. <laughs>